morning, and thank you for inviting us from Ghana to present and share ideas on tax benefit policies in Ghana. Uh, one exciting thing would be that I would have the opportunity to also rest on the protocols that have been observed already by extending appreciation to you and Yuaida for making this happen. So as introduced, my name is Prince Ba from the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research in Ghana, University of Ghana. All right, so we've had several training programs, right? Supervised by the ESA team, the GAMO team, on tax benefit policies. Now, essentially, for today, I would focus on some of these policy notes that have uh, come out of these trainings that we've had, the research retreats. So, I'll share an update on uh, GAMO activities for last year and this year. Then, uh, I'll summarize a key policy note which is very instrumental in informing an ongoing policy debate in Ghana. Right, then I'll share a few uh, plans we have for the next steps. So now this is just a, a photograph taken last year from the research retreat. And I, I guess you can find me with my feet all brought over there in the, in the corner. Right, so last year we had an interesting session with, we invited 12 participants across six policy and research institutions. And it's interesting to note that this gives us the opportunity to have policy uh, individuals, researchers, and academic individuals, as well as having people from the ministries all sit together in one room to have uh, a dispassionate argument about policy. Now, the outcomes from last year's retreat were mainly two. We came up with two policy briefs. One had to do with a pension scheme for agricultural, rural agricultural farmers in Ghana. Then the other is what I'll be presenting today will be a suggested hypothetical reform of the free senior high school policy in Ghana, one of the flagship policies in Ghana. Uh, we, we, we from Ghana are fortunate to have ended our yearly retreat before this uh, conference. So that was just sometime last week. So we ended that, and we also came up with four outputs from that, uh, from this year's retreat. But we will definitely focus on about two of them. So they span across informal sector tax reforms. And then another suggested uh, reform of the National Builder Score policy implemented by the government. Then we have a housing subsidy reform as well as the pension reform. So I'll just move straight on to the policy brief from last year. All right, now the free senior high school policy was introduced in 2017 by the government as an attempt to, well, the actual goal was to reduce poverty, but to do that was to remove cost barriers for assessing senior cycle, uh, secondary cycle education. So then essentially in Ghana now, if a student is moving from the junior cycle to the secondary cycle, is absorbed by the government. It's totally free. <coughs> that is what we mean by the free senior high school policy. Now this has brought up serious fiscal pressures onto the government. And then from our, from our retreat last year, we were suggesting a possible reform. It's very coincidental in a positive way that this year, there is also that similar suggestion from the IMF to the government that there is a need for a rethinking about the policy and how to reform the policy to create some fiscal space for the government. So this, this is just to, to add that what we do at Gamut, uh, what UNU Wada is also supervising, is really yielding positive intended outcomes. Right? So the main pillars of the policy, as I mentioned, the removal of cost barriers, expansion of infrastructure, improvement of quality and equity in education delivery, and then the development of employable skills. But the heavy emphasis is on the removal of cost barriers. Now this is what we suggested uh, last year, and this is coming from a team of five individuals, 
from academia. It's a diverse team from academia, from the Ministry of Finance, and from the Ghana Revenue Authority. Now, the reform is simple, that instead of the government focusing on a blanket uh, cost absorption, the government should rather focus on providing cost reliefs for only non-residential, uh, so relieving the non-residential component of the senior high school education. So with this, the hypothetical reform suggested was that the government should maintain a uniform financial benefit of 500 cities for all students. And now I must admit that this is coming from the data in 2017, right? So in recent times, you will, you will be having much higher figures than these. And the, the, what, we, what we will get from this is that when, once that is done, there will be fiscal space room for the government to pursue other social interventions. Now, the main issue has been that the FSHS has taken the, the load on government so much that the government does not have the room to implement other social in interventions. Now, recognizing that, we also add a complementary old age benefit scheme because that helps cons consolidate the poverty reduction agenda for the government. So now we put this to GAMOD, and GAMOD does that perfectly for us by showing us what the implications would be for poverty and inequality. Now, on the government expenditure side, it goes without saying that definitely one, you, you are only bearing the non-residential part of the student bill, there will be a cost reduction for government. So the first column is showing the, the, the status without a reform. But when we implement the free SHS reform as suggested, hypothetically, we find that it reduces government expenditure significantly by some 597 million Ghana cities. Right. Then the next question then is, what can the government do with this, with this cost saving? Right. But then also we notice that if we implement this reform, uh, poverty doesn't do quite well because then it's funds households would have received, but now they don't get the benefits of these funds. So then we find that poverty increased by 0.34 percentage points. So hence our complementary policy, that to help with the poverty reduction strategy, the government should use these savings for an old age scheme. So this way the government gets to maintain two social interventions with the same budget. So now, when we have the old age pension scheme, what comes up is that it costs the government an additional 558, right? But then there's a saving of 39 million Ghana cities. So in all, with the same budget on free SHS, the government gets to maintain free SHS policy, gets to add an additional social intervention for the aged, and also gets to save on 39 million Ghana cities annually, right? So this is the reform suggested by the GAMO team. And instructively, this also reduces the, the poverty, the headcount poverty, by 0.26 percentage points. Right? Inequality also reduces. So the argument we make for, for this reform is that, one, once this re reform is, is adopted, the government is able to subsidize, maintain its program of subsidizing senior high school education significantly, but also improves the poverty outcome, which is reducing poverty by an additional 0.26 percentage points, right? So that is a win for the government on the, on, on the poverty side. And the win for the government in the education side would also be that there, there are concerns about underutilizations of what we call community day schools. So these are schools that are set up within communities which are day schools, so kind of non-residential, right? But with the instance of the free SHS policy, we find that a lot of students were driven to the boarding school, what we call boarding schools, because that is also taken up by, by the government. So they, they didn't prefer the, the day schools, but chose to prefer the boarding schools. That led to serious pressure on the boarding facilities. Right. So with this policy, we get to spread students across all institutions. Where now the, 
the community day schools will be heavily utilized. That also improves educational outcomes for Ghana. So a win on education. Then there's a, a win on inequality, where the government's concern with this reform has always been that, well, you say we should reform. When we reform, it will affect poverty, it will affect income inequality. But here we come in and say, hey, no, rest. You can reform. Poverty will reduce significantly. Inequality would also be an issue where that, that would, shouldn't bother government that much because we find that with the complementary policy, we reduce, we bridge the inequality gap with that policy. So the, the recommendation to Sam Edel is that the government should focus on absorbing only the, the non-residential aspect of the senior high school bill. And with that, government can get to consolidate all its gains associated with poverty reduction by redirecting cost savings to support the elderly and also commit to the surplus. So from what I showed in the results, there was a surplus that the government uh, saves from our reform. The government can commit that to improving quality education. All right. So now the next step to, 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 to sum it up this year, we are exploring these two additional policies, which have come up also in Ghana strongly, the reform the housing sector reform. So possibly in due time, you, hear, you, you, you would hear from us again uh, with our suggested reform on these. Thank you very much. And thanks for listening. And that's the flag of Ghana.